Does it work? Are we on? Looks like we're on. I don't know. If, I think it's been a while. I was just working on my webcam. I don't know if anybody saw that or if anybody's here because it's been, I don't know how many weeks since we've done this show. A while. It was so, 2020. Yeah. It's been a, uh, you know, we'll throw in the year jokes or whatever. Um, I don't even know how to use my screen anymore. But uh, if anybody really cares, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, we live in three different places at three different time zones and have three different lives. So sometimes it doesn't all equal out. And that's really uh, what happened. Jeff's on a boycott because he's mad about something, as always. Somebody didn't tell him something, even though he doesn't listen. But screw you, Jeff. Welcome back. He says he's coming back next week. Like, that's a threat. Um, <laughs> uh, today's a good show. Uh, if anybody doesn't know about racing or uh, specifically on-road racing in Florida, I forgot I have to look at the camera. That's you. Uh, we have Mike Boylan. And you may or may not know him from several other things, but if you don't know what he looks like, this is what he looks like. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's up, guys? From sunny Florida. Mike uh, has been running. Just we're going to jump right into what the, the the reason why you're on an RC show. Uh, Mike has been running. I would say, is it still the largest race ever? Uh, Oh, ever I believe, yeah. We we've uh, we we maxed out one time almost like 850 entries. Um, yeah, it was there. Yeah, it is slowly <laughs> kind of come down. We still hit six or average around 700 every year, and uh, we get a lot of heads. Um, you know, that's the big thing: 400, 350, 400 heads. So yeah, it's it's been an awesome ride, man. It's you know we're this is the 27th annual. I've been doing this since day one. I I don't think anybody any race promoter or whatever you want to call me has uh, actually done a race. I mean, 27 years I've been involved from day one. Uh, that's yeah. a big chunk. A lot of these kids aren't even 27. <laughs> the whole off-road scene's under under 27, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, may, I may have missed a few years, but uh, Mike's race is an on-road. I think it maybe started just as oval. Yeah, well, we still do both. Um, yeah. it, it was oval only at a big uh, indoor track in Tampa. And uh, we only were there a couple years, and then um, I was a big Whippoorwill nut. And uh, that was a big oval back in the day. And everybody seemed to come to Florida. And I was afraid that we were going to lose that tradition of everybody coming to Florida. So that was kind of why we came up with snowbirds. You know, I remember in college, I drew, I hand drew the uh, first entry form uh, in college. And uh, yeah, so there was a whole idea was, you know, and then when we lost our track in Tampa, we decided to kind of follow Cleveland. Cleveland was always huge, you know, with the carpet. And uh, we went, went big time. And, uh, and uh, every year, you know, never, since 2001, we've been doing that carpet thing in, in Orlando. So, again, I'm going to fill in the people that are young and dumb. Uh, if you raced touring car, 12 scale, oval, uh, this was your race in the, in the winter that was like, I don't it wasn't the kickoff. And I, I don't know what was the end, but it was like the, the halftime show, I guess, of big races for on road. Yeah. Uh, the carpet. Yeah, that, I mean, definitely in the Northeast, it's still strong, you know, the season, they call it. Uh, carpet uh, is big. It's uh, still big. CRC is still whipping out carpet left and right. There's tracks popping up all over the place. Um, Midwest, up in you know Iowa, and the, the uh, Dakotas. Uh, so it's kind of neat, you know, to come down to Florida. And that is kind of maybe toward the end of the season. Usually the carpet on-road nationals from Roar uh, is the first part of March or something. So we're kind of towards the end of the season. Same with the oval, you know, a lot of the oval guys race dirt oval, and dirt oval is really big right now again. Uh, so a lot of the carpet guys will race in, in the winter. And then, of course, you know, when things warm up and uh, they have dirt oval tracks, they, they and, and same with the on-road. A lot of the on-road guys race off-road. So it's kind of cool. You know, the, the racers that are seasonal, they don't get burned out. They can do on-road in the winter and then off-road in the summer and the dirt oval for the oval guys and, you know, carpet. So it always worked, you know, to kind of be – and we're two weeks before Daytona. It's always been like the speed work, uh, speed weeks of Daytona. Um, and then NASCAR is going on. we got the Rolex 24 the same weekend. A lot of guys will go over there and uh, check out the NASCAR 
Um, so it's kind of neat. You know, we got a little tradition. It's the same weekend as Pro Bowl now, too, or Super Bowl now. Pro Bowl used to be the weekend for now. It's Super Bowl weekend. So everybody ends the snowbird week getting drunk in the hotel watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> Those who have been on the show and, and heard us talk, especially with people who have raced, uh, the Snowbirds comes up as one of the places that uh, we drink a lot. Um, and because the race, so my, my first uh, trip to the Snowbirds was when I was at Car Action. Um, I, I really had a thing up my ass of trying to race these things, even though I am the worst prepared racer, even though I can drive. I just not prepared whatsoever. And I remember flying there like, Thursday, not understanding that it's a race of 20 million people uh, with a car that wasn't built with just a bunch of parts. I probably had off-road tires in my bag and I showed up and I was like, yeah, I'm not racing. And uh, that's that was my first Snowbirds <laughs> event uh, where I learned that he ran 24 hours. So that was a tough one to figure out how to watch. Yeah. And uh, that's back when you we still had... Uh, what was the attraction smell? Uh, oh my God, Paragon. Paragon, Jeez. where you basically everybody is high as a kite from sniffing <laughs> Paragon, whatever turpentine, whatever the crap is. Uh, wow. Now you just don't smell it; and you still get all screwed up in your head. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was. It's an insane race, to be honest with you. And uh, it gets faster and faster and faster. And I want to talk about oval because I always make fun of oval, but oval is one of those things that's still around and still pretty popular. Um, and why? Well, it's a very uh, – well, NASCAR, you know, I mean, there's in the south, you know, you got a lot of short tracks. Uh, Oval's definitely the most intricate part of RC. I mean, a shim on the right front can can make or break you. So it's, it's, it's very frustrating to a lot of people to go fast. I mean, it's easy to go around in circles, but to make an oval car fast, and, and that's the addiction of the oval, oval crowd. I mean, they're, they're so technical – uh, they race for hundreds of a second. I mean, we'll have 30, 40 cars in one class, and it'll be a one-second spread between first and 15th. Now, if you think about one second, like, you know, that's that's snap of the finger. You got a four-minute race, um, and it's, it's just unheard of. And it's it's been that way from even back in the brush days and, and round cells of sub-C. It's always been so competitive. So um, that, that's the attraction. Now, now what's almost done um, – we have so many different classes now, like Salvas has come out with this Traxxas Mud Boss. I don't know if you've seen those, but they've conformed the Traxxas into a, a like an EDM looking style car. With the, mm -hmm. And that is so popular. Um, and rubber tires now have become kind of a big thing um, on some of the cars. So it's changed the driving of them. And then they got the SK modifieds. Like you, I think Derek, you from the Northeast, weren't you? So like SK was big yeah. up there. Those guys love it. Uh, the legends are still around. So, you know, there's a niche, and the kind of on-road's done the same thing. It, it, you know, with the VTA cars and the USGT, Paul and Hughes come out with tires for the, you, you know, and a, and a motor that's uh, really uh, spec. So there, there's really a good mix of classes now that we didn't have back then. Everybody finds a place, you know. It's uh, uh, it's kind of in a good spot. You know, there, there's, there's a little bit of, you know, I, I'm really happy with all the different levels. And, you know, we're doing entry counts for this year, and every class is, is doing well, even with, you know, we all know we're in Corona times. Um, I'm really pleased to see all the classes still uh, filling up, at least into the B and C mains. We used to call Oval Circle Discharger because it's all about who had the best battery. How has yeah. Oval changed now that we're so deep into the brushless and lipo era? Where I assume everyone's got plenty of battery and no one's even yeah, worried about serving, right? Exactly, and that's that's something the mod guys are frustrated about because they used to love the throttle drive and. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, the, the batteries, everything is, I think the motors and batteries have really settled down. Um, you, you know, the, the, the unknowns of brushless was a rough, rough few years because there was guys figuring out gray areas. Uh, and it was frustrating speed controls and, and batteries. I mean, there's tricks to the lipos. So I think everything has definitely settled down. That's why we're seeing this really close competitive racing. I mean, we, we have meters, you know, to check resistance and ohms and, and uh, ductance. And we know all about temperature now with, you know, ways that guys get around it. We know about rotor sizes. And um, so it's it's kind of gotten back to car setup and, and technology there. You know, nobody really can say they got beat by horsepower is what I guess right. what we're getting at. There's no magic motor uh, because, the, you know, quality is uh, the brushless motors. Everybody's figured them out. 
you know, there's no secrets anymore. And mm -hmm. uh, the quality is a lot better. The wire resistance, you know, get a lot of fades. So, and the, and the LiPo technology is good. So, I, you know, technology doesn't um, control racing, I think, like it used to. You know, car setup is now kind of back a huge part. No, nobody leaves a race complaining they got beat by horsepower. Yeah. Which is kind of sad in a way because I think part of the fun was that you had all these motor tuners that were, you know, totally agree, giving horsepower and it mattered more. I mean, I'm sure they're still there to justify a sticker, but um, well, there there are they they do you know motorizers are out there they they check um timing you know that uh, the different poles uh, you know they 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 do there are tuners and uh, the the art of shimming a a rotor or uh, matching. Um, the timing, you know, there, there is a science. It's just the knowledge. Everybody's kind of learned together. That's way above me, <laughs> but there are tuners out there that, that are helping people get to that point. But back to what you said, you know, I, when we, when we, when we were before brushless, uh, I, you know, you would, I would spend all week, like my, my ritual was race Sunday, take apart the batteries. Monday we would, uh, you know, I would grind them with a Dremel because we had to unsolder them. We would, uh, we would match them. And then Wednesday, we'd put them back together. And then Thursday, you would cycle them. And then you'd race them. And you'd do it all over again. And then in the meantime, you're, you're dynoing motors. My buddy Paul Schaub had a, a prop dyno in his, um, you know, we would Friday nights, we would spin, like, you know, trying different brush combos. So we didn't worry about car setup. And I think, honestly, I think it was easy. It was easier back then because people could buy horsepower and make horsepower and make up for crappy car setups. And uh, that tinkering crowd definitely uh i think got lost with brushless um you know it was fun to tweak a spring or you know file a brush a certain way and see the results and nowadays it's like you know it's all car set up so um it, it's it's shifted but now we're so far past those days nobody remembers those days so they don't know any different you know <laughs> it's funny because i think i i prefer the i don't have to touch anything setup but uh, we grew up at like oval being so specific to shims and stuff like that. And, and, and I say this in a nice way, oval is very easy to drive, but when you have 20 good drivers, then that becomes what is the, is the critical factor is yeah. the, is the thousandth shim and the, you know, the camber setup. So it's an easy class to get into and not feel like you don't know what you're doing, but obviously to be in the top, you know, Oh yeah. Top view, you you're, you have to be you know perfect on the car, and that's you can have a million dollars, and, and you are not going to beat a, somebody that's got everything perfect. And can I challenge that? You want to give me a million, and I can see. If, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll split it. Man. We'll, we, 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 By the way, I wore my Christmas shirt because we skipped Christmas, and I had a you know had a weather Griswold. So now nobody will know when this came out. Well, I'm wearing the Buck shirt because I, we you know Brady Land. We're uh, celebrating last night's Patriots event. too. Yeah. <laughs> um, see my Casio watch and my Atari shirt. I'm hey, look at that, man. Um, I think I got a Casio. No, I got a Timex. Look at that, man. Oh, that's Timex. Nice. That's a Walmart special, man. It's still clicking. Oh, yeah. Ten bucks. Uh, last time I was at a Snowbirds, uh, Team Associated was still making uh, oval cars. Um, yeah. Who, even, who, who are the top oval pan chassis guys these days? Um, there's a lot, actually. Um, Hyperdrive's still around. You know, Barry Hill. Um, there's I had no idea. New, oh, yeah. He's still doing it. Uh, you got a lot of new cars on the scene. KSG, like the McClellans have been coming to our race. Uh, Andy McClellan's been to every snowbird. Um, well, last year he had to, he had to miss, uh, but he's been to 25 snowbirds uh, at KSG. So they're still around. We got a lot of new companies. Oval Works is big. Uh, you know, Impact RC. There's probably a, a half a dozen. And and what's cool is they have team drivers like they've always had, and uh, they work together. Um, you know, you have your SK car companies. There's, but but now back to what you're saying, Associated. They're, they're, you know, Associated was the only one that you could buy, like at Tower Hobbies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've lost that ready to run type, you know, so specialized now. Um, so the cars are very, very, very similar. It's just everybody does a little tweaks to them. Yeah. And, and really, it's who you want to support. It's kind of like your Chevy guy, Ford guy, kind of like the touring car market, you know, X Ray, uh, Automatics, you know, all the different. You know, you got your teams, you know, cars are similar, but they, you know, they, they, uh, people find who they want to support. Um, and then they get a lot of manufacturer, you know, questions and, uh, at the, especially the big races, uh, these teams show up still, which is cool. And, and, you know, they're, they're there to help people. And, um, but yeah, so shoot, I think, I think oval 
and and on you know on road was so big with tc3s when tc3s came in the market and you could buy a ready to run a tc3 man it, it just skyrocketed touring car racing because you could buy one for like nothing you know yeah and my buddy had a, a speed line here they had a national but they had an outside track and you know people would see the, the touring cars running and then go in a hobby shop for two ninety nine and buy everything, you know. And, and so he would get racers after racers, and that that market kind of sucks that we lost that easy, you know, get into the hobby, yeah, uh, aspect because it's very hard now. I mean, it's it's a lot of money. It's you know, and it's frustrating because it's a science. Um, it's very technical. <laughs> Speaking of a simplified uh, racing, if not uh, easy racing, uh, I don't know if it was the last time Bowling Legends ran at Snowbirds, but the last time I was at Snowbirds. You actually threw out every Legends driver because every one of them was cheating. There wasn't a single guy who was following the rules. And the, and the, and the rules, basically, if people don't know the Legends, they're, they're, they're dirt simple cars. Yeah. It's like two sticks of fiberglass with an axle in it. Yeah. Um, and the essential rule of Legends was if the rule book doesn't say you can right. do it, then you can't do it. So you can't run your car with all the screws loose to make it flexible more. You, you can't uh, uh, run your axle in toothpaste you know, for 48 hours to... <laughs> None of that stuff. You have to just build the car yeah. by the box. And unless the manual says that you can do this, then you can't do it. A lot of great every people. guy had their car, like all kinds <laughs> of kind of derby tricks to. I think I remember that. That was so many years ago, man. But I think I remember Rick Jordan was here and he, I think he kind of like got everybody straight. Kind of like, Hey, you know, he basically got one shot to fix that, you know, <laughs> uh, believe, but you know what? We had a, a C main now the last 10 years in legends. And, and, and if you go back and look, you know, we, we have live RC show up. Uh, some of the best racing still is legends. Like, like you said, I, I don't understand, but you watch these guys race, and, and they're still running stick pack batteries, which is awesome. Ten dollar batteries, yep. and ten dollar motors, um, and uh, they're doing it. You know, uh, that, going back to what I said, there's, there, you know, you got so many choices now. Uh, it's great because if it's one class is too complicated, you still got legends. <laughs> and it's yeah. uh and the same thing with road course like the vta vintage vintage trans ams coming back and i posted a, a cool picture today uh racer chris leach posted a snowboard body they have headlights and taillights and um cool looking rims uh, um again you know it's it's cool that we have classes that are fun and the, ro and the rules on those type of classes are, are still written to be um you know cost controlled and simplified yeah you know what? This is probably too nerdy and goofy, and feel free to laugh it off. Um, but I would love, with all the battery power we have today and all the sweet LEDs we have today, to have night racing. Turn the lights out, <laughs> headlights on. That'd be fun. Yeah. No. Yeah. Every year, somebody shows. And what's cool? The F1 cars, they make brake kits for them, like mm -hmm. the real F1s, and, and it's so awesome to see them out there. Um, so I, I get I get excited when I see guys still doing stuff like that. You know, uh, there's a guy that paints. Um, Oval bodies. His name's Jody Miller, and he's. I heard he's got like a list of 20, 25 bodies for snowbirds, and, and you know, so people still take pride in painting them, and because uh, that, that was my biggest thing growing up. I remember slicks decals. Um, I would sit on the couch yeah. and just, I just, there was something about, you know, stickering a body, and, and making it look cool. Um, yeah. That part of the hobby, like Derek said about the the, the tinkering the motors, you know, there's all that's 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 the fun is. Uh, not so much the racing it's you know your, your home time your main cave <laughs> yeah well especially if you're never going to win a race you know that's all about uh, <laughs> you're look good. Car, make it look good oh we just make more classes so there's more winners <laughs> oh don't tell jeff that yeah well that's the only argument people want to go back to the good old days when it was only stock and modified you know and uh i, I was at whippoorwill one time we had 200 stock cars and we had 100 mod that's what they limited it was the reedy race of champions and uh we, we legitimately, they cut it off at 100 mod heads and 200 stock heads. But we didn't have choices back then. That's what I tell people. It's kind of like Woodstock. You know, everybody wants to go back to like, you know, they try to recreate Woodstock. And, you know, but, but that was a time that. Just one big race. Yeah, we didn't know any better. Yeah, it was like, it was it. And it's, we can never go back. You know, it's just, I'm just glad I lived it. <laughs> I would do uh, for me, to, and I, and I, mentioned like Reedy Race and like Tamiya stuff. I feel like you almost have to make force people to use the scale body and have a class where it's like for the pros is like you have three bodies and you have to run one each uh, qualifier. So you have like something scale. So, you know, because there's always that one body will have slightly faster somehow. You know, oh, yeah. 
you know, make it to where it's like, hey, they got to be scale. And 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 I think there used to be rules about having uh, a Bruce like with auto graphics. You had to have it look like a real car, right? I mean, was oh, yeah. that the rules at some point? Yeah, we had. That's pretty cool. I just saw the comment. Uh, auto graphics. I, I remember, uh, man, they had Earnhardt stickers and uh, they yeah. had auto graphics had all the cool stuff, man. I, I cut out the fender decals and. You know, Bob Hasha, Lake Whipple had a mandated rule. You had to have 15 fender decals. And I remember I broke the track record one time and he was, I only had 12 and he, he almost made me believe he was going to disqualify me because I didn't have enough stickers on the car. <laughs> I mean, so, um, you know, like tour is a big oval sanctioning body and they tried to mandate rules. That everybody had to have numbers and stickers to try to give it that look, but you know, hi, we couldn't enforce it. Um, you still get the racers that do the one color, um, you know, and I get it. I was that kid. I mean, I, I, hell, I, I had a body one time that had looked nothing like a race car. I had masking tape and looked like something out of the sixties, you know? So uh, yeah, it would be cool. If they look cool, but you know, you can make the rule and enforce it, you know, I'll yeah. be sponsors. <laughs> yeah. We can get free beer, free <laughs> beer. If you have a good looking body <laughs> or just paint it like your favorite beer, you know, it's easy Yeah, uh, or not. Gotta love beer, man. Moonshine and beer. I don't know what it is. Every year when we clean up the snowbirds, there's more mason jars in the pits than tire traction bottles. <laughs> I want to talk about something uh, people may not know. Uh, I was going to ask. There's me. <laughs> uh, well, see, here's the thing. I went to the snowbirds probably for at least, uh, I would say I was probably almost there 10 years. And everybody knew of Mike, but he's really working 24 hours a day. You know, he's as much as he says he drinks or anything, he's announcing and running the show uh, while we're all doing other things. Uh, so it's 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 never like we really hung out like and said, "Hey, <coughs> you like beer and I like hurricanes." You know what I mean? But, uh, so for those who didn't know, and and I didn't know this because I had to dig into it. Mike does uh, hurricane modeling. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's turned into almost a full time job um, that I love. It's a hobby. Um, but I started it in 2004 as a, a web page for the tropics. And uh, because we have hurricanes in Florida, uh, I, I made a, a page that was just all my favorite graphics. And every year it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, uh, I got a million followers on Facebook now, um, a lot of big time corporate sponsors. And uh, it's just crazy. I mean, the hurricane hunters, uh, I, you know, the people that follow the page, I mean, Jim Cantori and the Weather Channel, it's like, I'm like the, I'm the amateur meteorologist that can be myself, you know, and, and uh, not be corporate. Uh, and people love it. I mean, they, they, you know, I post sometimes when I shouldn't, uh, <laughs> but I'm serious. I mean, I know my stuff and people definitely trust what I have to show and say. So yeah, it's, it's been a really cool uh, ride. And every year it seems like it's just getting bigger and bigger. And what? So I, I have this question. What is the spaghetti? Is that just something you made up or do you actually have a computer model for hurricanes? Yeah, no, it's uh. so when we in Florida in 2004, we had four hurricanes coming. Um, there you go. What's Peter? Oh, Where is it? Wait, sorry. I pushed the button. <laughs> oh, hey, on his own right there. Oh, there it is. Spaghetti model. Yeah, man. Um, so when you look at hurricane tracking, uh, every few hours models spit out a new forecast and they put these on one plot and you get these, all the spaghetti models, they call them spaghetti models or computer models. So if you're, you know, if you're, tra if you're tracking a storm, um, you'll see a, a bunch of lines and each line is a potential path for a storm. Right. Now there's some that are more reliable than others, but people Google that. That's, I mean, every news channel in Florida, they show spaghetti models. People, people want to see, that chance, oh my God, there's a chance it could be coming to Tampa. Um, and then there's a lot of other, you know, graphics, uh, a million more, but that that's the one that for some reason that people love. Uh, so I bought the domain name Spaghetti Models. I mean, it's still Mike's weather page, but um, yeah, so that, that was uh, my uh, craziness that's turned um, kind of. So that was, that was just you making a page it wasn't that i for thought for some reason somebody told me you started as a weatherman that's what was always the weird part where i was like oh. <laughs> no I, it's all i would explain how i could just just do one race a year i guess <laughs> yeah well there's that theory that i made a million dollars on the snowbirds every year you know and, I, yeah, and I, 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 I i used to have thin skin um 
but I, you know, man, I got, yeah, we got 12, 15 people on the, that are there seven, eight, nine, 10 days. I mean, our wood cost this year was $7,000 that I, I probably will have to chuck because, uh, you know, I don't know, do we end up throwing, there you go, there's spaghetti models. <laughs> so there's a lot of money involved and we're still cheaper than some races. So I, I've kept the injury low. So I, what, but yeah, the weather thing has been big. Um, yeah, I did, I did a lot of computer work growing up, like these websites and <laughs> I worked for search engine companies for a little while, for six, seven, nine years now, and um, started that when the kids started going to school. So I, I've done everything, you know, to, to try to make a buck. <laughs> and the weather thing, I, I didn't plan on making anything out of it, and I still would do it if I didn't make anything out of it. Um, but it's like I said, I'm lucky enough to have some sponsors now that believe in me and um, pay decent. <laughs> so. Uh, and then the beer thing, you know, we talked about the beer. We came out with a beer, which is the craziest thing ever. Um, big Storm Brewery is a pretty big brewery here, and uh, they made a, a beer modeled after our. Um, uh, they got it behind me right here. I don't think you see it right there. Oh, I thought I had the right picture, but it wasn't. No, that, that's that's from the brewery. That's a good yeah. One. But uh, yeah, so there's our dog. You know, I, I went to school for marketing, and uh, I always knew I was going to make money on our Frenchies. Um, so I had our fans actually name our dog and, uh, we named it Hunter, Hurricane Hunter. And now we got a beer called Hurricane Hunter. And, uh, the coolest thing happened this year that you, you can only dream about, but one of the, uh, hurricanes, the hurricane hunters are based out of Lakeland, Florida. And when they came in from tracking a hurricane Zeta, they were all out on the runway with their beer, like 10, 10 of them, the whole crew had a hurricane hunter beer. With the airplane behind them that they just got done flying and it was like holy crap man you know um so now we're doing moonshine and yeah it's it's uh my local we watched the bucks last night they bought a bunch of restaurants from around town have it on tap uh, so that that's something i never dreamed would happen but man the, the, the here's this cool thing the racing crowd loves beer the weather people love beer uh, maybe the whole world loves beer i don't I know love beer. everybody loves beers <laughs> So yeah, we can all drink beer and, uh, you know, so yeah. And then the drunk donkey, uh, came around that's, you know, merchandise. Now I had an on-air meteorologist call me a drunk donkey on TV and, um, all my people were like, you gotta go check this out. And, uh, she got in trouble for that. She was like some dude down in Florida, um, some guy named Mike, you know, any drunk donkey can share a model. And she was pissed because, you know, I get I get a lot of fans that turn, you know, bigger than their numbers. So they, they look at it and uh, I have a few few haters. I have a lot more likes and dislikes. But anyway, she called me drunk donkey. So next thing you know, we make a T-shirt and now we're like drunk donkey nation. People people take pictures and they send them from all around the world. Man, I've, I've had that picture on the Great Wall of China. So we wearing the shirt. Um, I, one of the, you know, freaking... Uh, uh, senators in Alabama, uh, uh, Mississippi. I was up there storm chasing. He came by to say hi. He was a big fan. So it's 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 weird, man. But I, Nat, let me tell you what, though, with racing, you know, uh, NASCAR. I go to Daytona still, and uh, we know Tony Stewart was a big NASCAR or RC car guy. He still is, uh, and and it's amazing how the weather world it, or the NASCAR world is in the weather. And RC, so like uh, now I'm like connected even cooler. Like we have RC car guys, weather guys, and NASCAR guys, and we're all connected, you know, somehow. So it's, it's I've been very blessed with everything I've done. <laughs> it's been fun. Why didn't I think to get into weather as a hobby? Like it's free. There's new <laughs> stuff every day. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's just it's it, the social. I think the social media side really took off because people love it. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we had RC, remember RC tech, yeah. um, racers, you know, the chat thing, they were really, uh, racers are different than weather guys. Like, you know, I'll start a post and, you know, racers like to argue. <laughs> and, uh, one cool thing about weather is, um, most people aren't mad. So I, I haven't had to deal with the RC being a race director or owner of a racetrack is probably the most stressful thing anybody's ever had to do. I mean, how many tracks have you seen come and go? Where, where owners just had enough, you know, I mean, racers can really. You well, know, it's like managing a hundred babies. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to call them that, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, grown, grown men and toys. Yeah. 
it's tough. I mean, I mean, you can't really argue about weather. It's either it's raining or not raining. Yeah, I mean, and they get mad. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's no big fights between like hurricane guys and tornado guys. Like, uh, I've actually had some people get crazy, you know, really upset, crazy. I, I got, I had to, I pay him. I got a Facebook moderator now that I pay. I uh, never thought I'd have a staff, but um, you know, we have to because I'll be doing Facebook lives and we get the spammers. Like you see them on like CNN and Fox. There's people that when you have a lot of people watching, you get spammers to come in and start hammering you with like weirdest crap pharmacy stuff and or do you get haters get in there and, and they'll start just tearing you down uh for one reason only so we've had to stop that and they're not real fans they're just you know people out there stirring trouble i'm going on facebook right now to start an argument about your recent post of freezing temperatures <laughs> yeah <Yep>. in florida <laughs> we're, we're in a frost we got frost coming tonight man this is not hey, I, i've been in the snowbirds where it's pretty cold like into the 50s so uh, it's not all suntan now we always get that stupid cold front right before our race and yeah. uh, it's freaking freezing you know but, but hey back to alcohol back to the baby thing the more you drink the less controversy we get so that's my secret you know bring all your alcohol get, get drunk and most people don't care anymore so that's the secret to any race promoter out there Hey, I mean, if you guys don't, well, you, I guess they have a bar there now, but I mean, selling, selling beer at the track is like, I can't believe that took so long. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do it. My daughter plays softball in one of the softball fields. Uh, they have bars in them all over the place. Yeah. It was the first one over at uh, the space coast and they had land shark buckets and we're drinking them at like 10 in the morning. I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> it was a long day because we played five games. <laughs> well. As an adult, it, it, uh, is it called slosh ball where you have the beer on second base? <laughs> well, no, we're just watching our kids. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, ah, eh, whatever, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. Um, it's, yeah, so we're um, there's some trophy pictures. I know Peter, man, back in the RC car action days, um, you know, I miss the magazines because I mean, I, growing up, my mom and dad would, uh, you know, we would just die for the latest magazine. And we didn't have internet back then, right? So. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was a total different time. Um, people just couldn't wait. To, you know, that was the only way you got race results. So, yeah, I guess changes that we've seen over the years is um, I'm, I do miss that. I mean, it was like you, you would go to your newsstand every day, just waiting for that magazine. You know, yeah. I hate I hate that because it, you would just that would be so pure excitement to to get the magazine. And um, but now it's kind of like people want the results. Like if we don't have it posted two seconds after the race, man. Where's it? Where's it at? Where's it at? You know. I mean, and if we're talking about media differences and, and uh, this is why most magazines gave, gave up is that you can't compete with the internet. So, you know, you, we'd go there and spend thousands. Of, I mean, it costs you money, but it'll cost the publishing company money to send someone there for a few days. You know, it's probably minimum like five grand to send somebody there. And then the results are at best 30 days from that. And then uh, internet came along and then it's like, well, we can't compete with live results. But I will tell you that what what live coverage misses is there's no recap of the race. It's a you're watching it raw, which is okay, but there's no highlights. Right. So you know everybody watches Sports Center for to catch the highlights of this, and and that's kind of what a magazine would do is recap, and they don't have that online. At, yeah. at, True, I don't think at all anymore. That, no. you, you don't get any flavor of the race. You know, uh, you, you get who won and what happened on the track, but. There's no picture of here's the team associated crew playing a pickup basketball game when the computers went down for an hour, you know, or right. that kind of stuff where it's like, oh, wow, it looks like there's a lot of fun to be with the factory guys at a big event. Yeah, well, there might be a niche niche there, maybe, you know. Um, yeah, but nobody wants to pay for it. I mean, in, in the end, it's got to pay for things to do that. You know, it's, if we're talking about publishing is to make a magazine super expensive to print something and, mm. and uh, you know, nobody really wants to put I, I, don't, I don't even know how these live RC and all this stuff actually makes enough money because you, you know the cost of putting on a race. Right. I mean, to have a crew there to cover it. And hey, I, I watch some of these races online. It's amazing that we can watch and they do a decent job of following fast cars. I mean, yeah. I don't know about the oval class. So I may barf watching that one. <laughs> we but, just uh, keep it fixed. We've, we tried to move the camera, but oh, no. uh, just, just, just boom. Just shake your head like this. <laughs> I still remember the first time of me. I mean, I raced oval. Um, Back in the day when I was a kid, uh, I don't really think we had a mod class, but it was like in Stafford Springs and some of the bigger ovals up in the Northeast. 
And I still remember the first time from Mod Oval with the Snowbirds and the, the, like a fan turned on. You know, the, you have 10 cars going oh, yeah, right, right. like 60 miles an hour in a circle. And then, you know, you have yeah. a breeze coming off the track from it. It was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah we raced at, the, um, at turn, uh, turn, what the hell was the name of it? Uh, something four. It was, it was banked, right? Uh, upstairs. Wasn't there a track up in Stafford Springs? Like a bank? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think, no. I don't remember the track, but it was upstairs. It was a, it was an oval with one like tight turn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there was one in Southington that had a full banked bigger oval too. Yeah, I went to that one. Yeah, which was really – it was fun. Uh, you know, the thing was back in the day is that you actually needed a shit ton of money to yeah. be fast. You know, as a 14-year-old paper boy mm -hmm. uh, running stock with the same motor, it was like I could yeah. get to the pace of the guys that had money, but I, I could never beat them even though I was probably a better driver because I just didn't – you had to have five motors and ten batteries and you had to have super – you know – you can't go there with your ProTech charger turning the 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah, it just doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah, but. now we now we're down to the thousands of a volt because we're you know your voltage max on lipos. I mean, uh, hundreds of a tenth of a volt matter now. You know, uh, and, 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 and you know what's you mentioned that, but that, that hasn't really changed. That's what's um, always been there. You know, everybody's tried to come up with cost controlled racing and. It just never really seems to work. The only thing that we did last year, we brought back uh, a, a breakout class, and it it, it really opened my eyes because when I had my racetrack in Tampa and Whippoorwill, breakout was the, the core of our attendance, and you would set a lap limit or a lap time limit, and and you couldn't go past that. Kind of like bracket racing with drag drag racing. Um, yeah. Well, the cool thing about what we did last year was uh, we just set a lap time. It was five zero, I think it was. If you go below it, the computer doesn't count. And man, you know what? These guys figured it out. And we had eight, nine, ten cars running exactly the same lap time. And uh, and, and there's no rules on motors or batteries. So whatever you got to do to get that, uh, you can run a brush motor, stick pack. Um, so that that needs to be brought back more because that that kept my track alive. I had a we had four stock classes. We had three breakouts with different lap speeds, and we had open. So. Um, that that would be. I don't know how you do it with road course. Uh, road course kind of is, is set up more with motor speed. Like we still have an amateur class. In fact, uh, our amateur touring car class is one of the biggest classes this year at Snowbirds. Um, so that's great, great to see. Um, so we just we just got to think back to don't let the speed get out of hand, you know, and make it easy, like you mentioned. Well, for me, I mean, if I'll take a lesson from, uh, and you mentioned this already, is that. Uh, kind of what brought me back to electric indoor racing was slash uh and it was the same car shitty tires that didn't have grip and that's like probably the number one thing for me is that if you don't have grip horsepower doesn't matter um and uh and you know keeping the stock motor and limiting kind of what you can do but not making rules to where it makes it no fun because you got to have a little bit of of leeway and stuff that makes sense yeah. Um, well, but if there's a slash class, and I, I use that only is because it seems like the only chassis that we can kind of gather around to create it into something. You know what I mean? Like you had yeah. slash that created short course. You had slash that created drag racing. You had slash uh, that probably, I think they were doing Dirt Oval before Associated came out with the new, their new uh, Dirt Oval car. But they, they've kind of morphed it into everything because it's somewhat versatile not really that great and and that's in a good way it doesn't have a lot of traction to give so it's forgiving but uh, you know too much traction just ruins everything to no me. it does no you're 100 right i mean touring car foam right um i don't know if you remember that they were like pan cars yeah with touring car right and um yeah traction you know you got to get throttled for you know anytime, like you said anytime you can you don't get beat by horsepower is a win because um that puts driving back into it. and that's why the rubber classes uh, you know there's a big push in 12 scale uh scott jakes has a, a 12 scale rubber tire that he's really pushing hard and they test it and people seem to like it um so it's even it's even morphing its way into to pan cars on on uh, on road course um and the same thing with rubber you know rubber on touring cars kind of brought that back where you kind of slip and slide and uh yeah, so we can learn a lot. I mean, yeah, you you know, uh, I mean, I look back at my early days, Dirt Oval, it was like eight second laps, you know, at the flea market 
uh, and there's cars bouncing around and there's dirt flying, and, you know, and, and that yeah, was it. Stuff, yeah. Well, you know, we knew any better, you know, that was modified. I mean, I remember <coughs> my dad, like we were shoving a toothpick in the brushes one time because it, it got, you know, that was, it was, it, it, that's the only way it would work. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah. I remember Whippoorwill, like uh, my, my uh, RC10 pushed and nobody knew how to make the car turn. So I, I bought a Lynx, a composite craft Lynx. We bought a $400 car because it steered better. Because nobody knew about you know setups, um, we were so innocent, you know, and, and that's a, that's a, sucks about everything. It all evolves, you know. But yeah, taking traction away um, definitely uh, takes horsepower less less out of it, you know. Uh, that's why the off road is crazy to me to see what what off road. I'm not an off roader, so I can't, you know, I, it'd be silly for me to even. But to see the carpet go to off road, it's like man, you know, I, I remember the innocence of sliding around and jumps and now it's like a serious you know serious. It's, 12, yeah, it's 12 scale modifier with drum with jumps and that's why i laugh at it all the time it's great it's it's too intense for to get people to do it oh and they love it like we got a track here beach line remember robbie michael from superior hobbies been yeah. around forever now he's got an awesome indoor joint and man he gets the racers you know they 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 love it uh they just had a chili bowl last weekend you know and the track grooves up and gets hard packed you know dirt oval um so everybody adapts. It's just, I, 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 you know, back to the slashes and stuff. We had a dirt oval track here in Tampa that was all loose pack and it was fun. I remember um, sliding, you know, those days of counter steering. And, um, but again, everything evolves. I mean, <laughs> you can't see, so you can't reproduce it. See, so racing gets so technical with off road. I remember Lake Park had a lot of races. Uh, and, and if you didn't groom a track the same every heat, it really isn't fair. And I can get, I see people's point, you know. They want fair racing from heat one to heat 10 because heat 10, it's going to be harder packed than heat one might be. Right. So they tried to make, you know, they, they try to go out there and blow every race. And so I don't know, you know, but in our early days, nobody cared. Nobody, nobody was that worried about a 10th of a second. You know, they were just happy to make a lap and not flip. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, it, everything evolves, you know, well, but nothing. So I always try to equate it to like real life stuff and, so WRC, like rally racing, that mattered. That's, you know, they don't prep their surfaces and they have that same problem is that the guys that run first have a worse, slower time. But that's your part of sucking. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make it up the suck ladder, start suck, you know, less suck, less suck. And then then you get into being faster. You have to earn your yeah. your place. On the, I mean, that you know, our angry Canadians not here to go, you know, we only need stock and mod and, and, and three... Well, I hear it. And uh, Jeff would get upset and has gotten upset when I say, like, the, I, I think we worry too much about making sure the fastest guy is the winner. Racing, I, I think, I, I don't think you should build chance into it. I don't think you should have a, a pendulum that might knock your car off the track. But <laughs> I like the idea that, you know what, it comes down to one race for all the marbles. And if you have some bad luck and you pipe your car, you can lose it all. Yeah. And you don't get two more mains to make up for it, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, we've, we've been down that road. People want triple mains, double mains. Um... Yeah, I don't. I mean, heck, man, the snowbirds. We had we had three heats, right, uh, in the early days, and we didn't even resort. And we would have an eight car heat race, so we didn't resort back then. So think about it: if you were on on row, if you were in car number seven or eight, you never got a front row start at the snowbirds. <laughs> um, and like I was saying, one second could be the difference between first uh, A main and C main. So again, you know, that's all we knew. Yeah, nobody knew. resorted. Yeah. But then, of course, like I said, it evolved. And now, you know, man, if we did that now, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be running, I'd be running for the mountains, <laughs> chop my head off. Well, even Formula One uh, toyed with reverse uh, starting grids this year, so wow. it's not, it's not, we're not stuck in it in RC. That's a, it's, you know, it's the same thing in all full scale racing. Is do you want to make it fun to watch? Because most people don't want to watch somebody destroy the pack. They want to see yeah. a bunch of action and and you know and stuff yeah. going on. So if you are a good driver, you should be able to get from tenth to first. To be honest with you, but, yeah, yeah. We, we we used to invert the mains. Uh, what about Traxxas, the off road when they set up for the uh, you know the Indy cars when they set up the uh, jumps? Have you seen that with the stadium trucks? Oh, yeah, yeah. that is oh, so yeah. cool, that's pretty man. amazing. Yeah. And, uh, when they were doing the torque series, you know, in, in the Durham, right. um, I don't know if Lucas also did this, but there would be a, a, a mandatory mid race yellow to bunch the field back up. So yeah. you got to show, you know? Yeah, they didn't that's want what NASCAR is away. NASCAR is doing it with stages and, you know, they're trying. Same thing. People get bored, you know? I mean, yeah. I get bored. I mean, 
Yeah, it's I mean, not there, there are races that don't you don't need that in Supercross, but yeah, if it's a race where like it turns into a parade, bunch them back up. I paid yeah. to see a show. Yeah, and then race promoters told me they would throw a caution because their their hot dog and beer sales go up. Yeah, think yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they go caution, and they just made five grand in hot and beer sales. <laughs> Hey, this year, if you can do it, you should have a, a pro race with a chug of beer yeah. every five laps. You have to chug the beer to continue. Yeah. I've had people uh, mention that or shots, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have to do some heavy duty moonshine because uh, it would take a while for uh, our, most of our alcoholics probably wouldn't feel the buzz until the 10th. <laughs> hey, that's the bonus of drinking. And now, yeah. they're, now they're better at RC, you know. Yeah, we've tried it all, man. We've done like a trailer race, and and last year we did like a wrestling match tag team. I don't know. They're always asking me, "What are we gonna do Saturday night? Saturday night? Saturday night?" So we always try to do something fun. Um, and we did the figure eight for a while, and it just turned into like a freaking demolition derby. Yeah, cars everywhere, people throwing shit in the track. <laughs> but it was fun, you know. You people, you know, the thing is, too, man. Everybody's got to realize it's a hobby, you know, and. Uh, I, th I think what I hate is, and, and I see it with softball, the same thing. My daughter's in travel ball. She's 14, 15, you know. People take sometimes take things way, way, way. And I was there, you know. You lose you lose what got you into it. And, and you know, Monday morning, you go through the McDonald's drive through They don't even, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you, um, just have fun, you know. I mean, you know, make personal uh, gains, uh, you know, try to get better. And, and that, that should be your victory, you know, not so much uh, how, how you won or lost and have fun while you're doing it. Because I'm telling you what, the memories that you make, anybody new in this sport, and I've seen it with my daughter in softball, you don't remember the tournament six months ago if you won or lost. You remember that night you went to like Outback and everybody had a good time or Chili's or to sleep over at the hotel. So that's what you remember, you know, and uh, same with snow. That's what that's what old people say. I'm old. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I old agree. I'm old. I'm old, man. I, I agree with you, but that's like what I do now is that, you know, when I played basketball when I was younger, I, I wasn't about the memory. It was about destroying my opponent. So <laughs> well, when you get up, you're like, yeah, I can't do that anymore. So let's yeah. make some memories. But yeah. Well, at the time, you know, you're right at the time. I'm saying, but now me looking back to even Whipple old days, I had more fun on Friday night. Where are we going to go eat? You know, that that's all I remember. Yeah. You know, it's weird. But at the time, you don't realize that. But man, I was there was nobody more diehard than me um, back in those days, man. I mean, I lived it, and uh, I couldn't get a start because we, you know, you see, Whipple was concrete. If I had a bad day start, I'd drive over there after school two and a half hours just to practice my starts for Saturday, you know. And I'd sleep in the car because I had no money. I mean, but that was, you know, so I, yeah, I, I've lived both lives, man. Um, but without, you know, what I think it was on the internet back then. We, you know, you dealt with things. You just you know, now now that you have the communication, the internet, I think controversy spreads faster. Yeah, and, and everybody stuff. Has to bitch about everything. Yeah, yeah. Back then, you didn't have anybody bitch to. Yeah. So you you didn't get depressed during the week reading the crap. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people get tired of it. I'm telling you know they they get worked up and you know everybody believes what they hear. Uh, and then the next you know we lose a guy, another guy, you know. So, but anyway, yeah, we're getting close to your. 15 minutes here. I know Peter had to go in an hour. I don't want to hog your show. What else? What else you, got? you are the show. So, uh, um, I'm on the show. We're, yeah. Otherwise, it's me and Pete looking at each other. All right. Well, I'm just looking at a camera. <laughs> nah. Now, you guys helped get me get the race kickstarted, man. I'll never forget uh, Ernie, you know, getting Peter would come to the race. And then, you know, Derek, Derek, I did the oval thing for you for a while. The oval guys digged it. Um, you know, we had a monthly column. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. It I just was, the drinking, see? Yeah, no, it was, it was uh, and I had a good time doing that, you know. And I think that kind of stuff really helped uh, kickstart the event for me and get it on, on the place. And, and now we got Live RC, luckily. Um, you know, there's a new scoring software out there now, Live Time, and he comes to our race. And, man, that was a huge hurdle for us to get over because we used to use AutoScore, man. Back in the day, it was like a DOS computer you know and so we've had to evolve and, and now you know i feel we're in a good spot man um you know this year sucks you know i was in a really rough spot you know everybody's been canceling events and 
uh, with Florida, you know, Florida is like the outlaw state of the nation, I guess. And, and we really aren't closed. So, um, you know, we said, Hey, we're going to do it, you know, and, and, you know, we have 27 states signed up so far, which is unheard, you know, unbelievable, believable. So I, you know, I, I was a little worried about it, you know, if we were going to get any attendance, I didn't, I expected to be maybe 20, 30, 40, 40% 40 off normal. And uh, you know, we'll just deal with it. <laughs> we're going to, you know, the show goes on, you know, it's, a lot of people, this is, this is going to, you know, they live for this. And uh, so it's a crazy year, but we're, we're I don't know if you're announcing this now, but all temperature checks will be anal at the snowbirds this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's only well, accurate one. Yeah. We'll have fun with that, man. The, uh, <laughs> they stopped doing the temp checks, but um, it was funny. I saw a, a, a customs guy, my daughter just got her license and he, he had uh, his pistol in a holster and he had a tip gun in the holster and i was like i was gonna take a picture man and say if this isn't like 2020 or 2021 now you got a temperature gun and a you know we're gonna check your tip we're gonna check your you know um yeah whatever but um yeah we're excited man i got you know we get we start out every year with brand new carpet we got you know i got the we got the best crew that builds a track is so smooth uh it's coming together you know, it's um, two weeks, man. We'll, you know, we always put our live stream on um, as we build it. So anybody who wants to see it, what what that's all about, just look for Snowbirds on Live RC and starting Saturday morning, you'll see us three days it takes to build this racetrack from, from scratch. But what, what's the secret to a great track? Well, we, we had to learn the hard way, man. Uh, we got some funny stories that we could tell around a campfire and lots of beers. But the first year we took uh, plywood uh, seven eighths OBS board, which is the cheapest crap on the planet. And I just, we just laid it down and cold front came through. I'll never forget. Freaking 12 scales were jumping off the track. The, the wood, just every place did yeah. everything did that. <laughs> so, um, so next year we got thicker wood, same crap. Then when we, we got genius and thought duct tape would hold it, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> So now I got a guy, uh, the Padano brothers, Tom Padano, they're cabinet guys. They're big racers. We built a solid subfloor. He shims every piece. Um, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's been a really long evolution um, <laughs> building the track. Uh, but we've had some freaking stress. Let me tell you what. I mean, I'll never forget. I think it was uh, Mike McMahon. Did he work for you guys? Were you were buddies or something? Yeah. Like, no, I remember. I probably remember the race you're talking about when he wheelied off the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and everybody's looking at me, and I'm like, like, oh god! I think Blackstock did a wheelie down the hole straightaway. Um, and the old guys forget about it; they're like freaking, like, you know. One year at the old hotel, uh, we were tap conning into their carpet. <laughs> Every time there was a bump, we would just tap on. We're like, I'm like, stand by the door, make sure the hotel didn't see us. And we're drilling into the floor of the concrete, and we're tap conning, you know, um, to get through it. <laughs> So, yeah, but that's a secret. I mean, it just took a lot of love, a lot of labor of love, you know. Um, hey, if I were a million, I'd do it too. Yeah, you, yeah, I'd do five, two a year. <laughs> hey, as I said before, is, uh, you, Mike has put on a, an amazing race for, uh, I couldn't imagine, but I, I've been there for a long time, but 27 years. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it pays something, you know, and uh, if not, hopefully you just enjoy doing it. Um, and lesson to everybody that's going to put on a race or go to a race is that remember the person putting on the race is putting a lot of time and effort in. Nothing is free. So if you're going to bitch and complain, maybe just shut your mouth. That's my advice to everybody. You know, yeah. we, everybody, everybody can complain all day. We don't need to. Um, and it, it hurts, man. I mean, it, like I said, it, I've seen so many track owners just have enough. And it's, it, 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 there's been a lot of track owners that just had enough because, you know, but they had a sign on the softball field. I was laughing at. I always think the same thing. You know, umpires are human. Nobody's going to get a college ball. You know, they're telling parents, even at the sports thing, the same thing. So I, I think it's just that intensity everybody gets into. They want to complain yeah. a bit. And somebody, uh, somebody can go crazy, punch you in the mouth. Um, we're going to get going because Pete's got to uh, play Atari and Mike's got a, uh, has got a beer date and I got to eat dinner. Yeah. Um, What's for so, dinner? Uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> And then uh, we, uh, George brought up uh, the carpet race, yes. which was a was a. I think I've told the outtakes of this, and there's probably weird uh, video of me at a strip club uh, with a camera, but that's all legend. Yeah. 
Um, that was a good time, man. Yeah. <laughs> Some funny times, great memories at the Snowbirds. It was one of my favorite things. I have a scar on my head from hitting my head on a palm tree going to the photos. Um, uh, just too many things to talk about. And, uh, you know, I may have rear-ended someone in a Cadillac uh, coming from Hooters. These are all things that did not happen but may have. Uh, Mike, anytime you want to come back on, let me know. Yeah. I'm going to start fights on your weather channel to see if your moderators are doing their job correctly. You'll get attacked. Uh, I got an army of uh, followers, man. They're, they're, <laughs> they die for me, man. Yeah, I want you to send me your beer. I, is it what is what beer is it? Uh, well, there's a picture of it. Hurricane Hunter. Oh, it's a right. tropical. Oh, it's a mm -hmm. tropical IPA. It's like six percent. And what's cool is they're making it a four can series. So our new one's coming out. It's a New Zealand um, style oh, IPA. I guess yeah. it's kind of popular now in the wintertime. Um, so yeah, yeah, and it's all got the dog. It's got my logo on there. So I, you know, if you ever come down. I can mail you some. I even got a kegerator at the house now. Never mm -hmm. thought I'd have that. My wife just hates me. <laughs> Kegerators are bad. It makes you drink too much. Um, everybody, remember we make a magazine. I don't know if that fucking matters. And then yeah. uh, look, I got some. Items. <laughs> I, I showed these, man. I keep them all, man. Back in the day, look at that. I was a big. One. Yeah, this is this is 2010. I got a nine. I got eights. And <laughs> It was probably the last time I went to the Snowbirds, if there's a Snowbirds coverage in there. Um, so if you haven't gone to the race, uh, sign up, watch it live on uh, Live RC. Uh, watch them build the track. Go buy beers if you live in Florida. And uh, we know Florida's open because there's a website only in Florida or something like that. You know what I mean? The weird stuff happens in Florida. So Yeah, we get all the crazy stories, man. <laughs> um, yeah, we, yeah, it's a great... Uh, yeah, it's a great event. We got great sponsors. I got almost 30 sponsors this year that agreed to come back. So, you know, props to them. And uh, they, you know, they want to see the race go on. So we got a lot of great uh, people coming. So make sure you watch it. If you're coming, we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> two weeks away. But uh, so watch all the coverage. And then for now, uh, we're out. We should be back next week. Uh, I got no promises on that one. But uh, Jeff says he's coming back. If you're a Jeff fan, he'll be back. If you're not a Jeff fan, you may want to tune out. <laughs>